Are you, are you really what you say you are? Come on, come on. On that side, I could ask you, are you really the confession or are you really how you want me to believe you are? But then on the other hand, I could be saying in a rhetorical sense, come on, man. Is all this really happening to me? Come on, man. I can't believe this is me in the middle of this story. Because some of us have had or are having a come on man moment right now. Come on, come on. You are struggling to pay bills. You are struggling to get your car fixed. You are struggling to stay in your house. You are struggling to deal with your children. Come on, man. Are you for real that I've gone through this and I've lived this long and now this is what I'm dealing with? Come on, come on. But I want to ask the question, are you for real? And I want you to understand that I don't care which way you need to deal with it. I'm going to try to hit every point Glory. Amen. in about 22 minutes. Lesson five. One of the first things I want to tell you or point out to you is that as I'm asking this question and as I deal with this text, uh, Evangelist, one of the things I want you to hear this is that sin controls the sin controlled. Sin controls the sin controlled. Some of you have got to come to grips in the church with the illusion of inclusion. See, when ministry is structured around approving an anti-biblical lifestyle and it appeases your unlawful desires, you need to check the leadership and check yourself. Because sin controls the sin control. If the messages that you hear in the church make you feel good and, and, and ratify your lifestyle when you know your lifestyle is anti-biblical and anti-God-like, you have to understand that maybe the leadership is wrong or maybe your hearing is wrong or a combination of them both. Mm -hmm. But I want to lift up the point that you might be in the wrong place. Paul, as he's writing this letter to Timotheus, he says this in the third chapter, um, in the second letter, um, verse 6, he says, For all this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Here we have, Deke, we have a situation, and I don't want to get on the gullible women part, besides the fact that there are a lot of folk um, channeling a feminine spirit in the church. Uh, uh, because you're in your soulish realm. And you're channeling a feminine spirit, and you become gullible to a word that makes you uh, uh, feel okay about your sin. Yeah. Sin is still spelled sin, S-I-N. No matter how you look at it, how much you want to dress it up, if you're living a lifestyle of sin, it's sin. I don't care if they call it proclivity. I don't care if you say you're born with it. I don't care what it is. Sin, no matter how you look at it, it's sin. And so we have to be careful of the ministry that gives you the illusion of inclusion, that tells you that you're going to go to heaven sinning, that tells you that you can live any kind of way you want to and you're still going to be accepted by God. We have to be careful. And, and, and I don't know, this is what God gave me, uh, that, that, that see, your ministry or the ministry that, you, that appeals to you can't be structured around your lifestyle. The ministry that you deal with needs to challenge your lifestyle. Right. Challenge you to live right. Amen. Challenge you to get into your word. Challenge you to make sure that your life is lining up to the word. Is this helping anybody? Amen. 
And if you're wondering why you're here, I'm telling you that God gave me this word to tell you. This, is, this word applies to me as a preacher as well as to you. That if I am living a life of sin, and see, one of the things you have to hear me um, as I speak to you uh, is that let me give you some things that sin mean in this perilous time. So I'm going to go back to the first verse I read. Mm -hmm. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous disobedient to parents. Now, if I could put a pen right there and just go for about an hour. Because for some reason, we say I'm grown now and we don't understand that God still believes in the order and God still wants you to be obedient and God still believes in honor and God, oh, let me say it again, God still believes in honor and in this time, we've taken honor out of families. We've taken, oh, let me stop. disobedient to parents, unthankful. Uh, if I suggested to you that, that maybe your ungrateful, unthankful self uh, is sinning by being ungrateful and unthankful, uh, let, me say, let me lift this up to you that God has done so much for you. And, and I love that the praise team sang that song, God Is. Uh, he's the joy, he's the strength of my life. He, he, he removes what? All, all pain, a misery, and what? Strife. He said he promised to what? Keep me. See, when you start understanding that God has promised to keep you beyond if you were keeping yourself, beyond what you were doing, that you understood that God promised some things to you, and you ought to be thankful. Oh, I wish two people would give him thanks right now. We find churches allowing you to be unholy, allowing you to, and I'm not the Facebook police, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, don't, I don't get on it that much, and when I do, I scroll, and that's it. I'm not a, I don't post, I don't like, I, I don't share, I, I rarely do all of that stuff. Uh, um, if you, you know if I post something on Facebook, it's, something, it's, it's, it's a, mon, a monumentous moment. You know, it's, it's something big, okay? Uh, like those milkshakes. <laughs> and those milkshakes might have been unholy. But what I want to, I want to, I want to share this with you. If I could, if I could, if I could, we use social media to post unholy things. And then on Monday, or some, I mean on Thursday, but on Monday we talk about how good a time we had in church. Um, because it's the illusion of inclusion. Just because you get on Facebook and shout and sing gospel songs don't mean that you have a relationship with God. Amen. 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 Uh, some folk um, think because they liked Oprah, Oprah's post or because they, they liked uh, President Trump's or President Biden's post that they know him. You don't know no. See, just because just because you just because you have you you have you have a something where you can agree on doesn't mean that you necessarily are intimate with them. And see, that God is requiring us not to just agree with a song. Not oh, I just said something. Not to agree with a clicheic moment. God wants us to be intimate with Him and live our life uh, 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 representing who He is. Amen. And part of this is that we've got to learn how to be loving. Now, loving is not agreement. I want you to hear this. Loving is not agreement. If I really love you, I'm going to tell you some stuff. That dress is too tight. I'm going to tell you that suit don't fit. I'm going to tell you those clothes don't match. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you you need to, you need to, you smell. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you your breath stink. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you your, you need to cut your hair. I'm going to tell you. How did some folk let me go out? 
start looking that way. Uh, you got to love me enough to tell me I look a hot mess. Uh, I'm going to tell you some stuff about you. Uh, listen, don't you ever wonder when you go back and look at your old pictures, why didn't nobody tell me that this, that this Gumby look didn't look good on me? Why did nobody tell me that I shouldn't have wore that? Uh, uh, oh, y'all just see some of y'all. Okay, y'all was always fly. No, some of us had our ugly moments. Amen? Yeah. Unforgiving. There have been times when uh, we have to show people forgiveness D, just for the fact that God wants us to. Because right. uh, when I forgive you, it does, not, it does not necessarily mean or give me a guarantee that you're going to change. And see, some of us have been waiting for folk to change before we forgive them. That's right. That's uh, I'm going to forgive you because it's the will of God over my life. Amen. Uh, well, 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 Robert, that don't make sense. Well, I'm going to give you a scripture uh, that makes sense. All right. How many times in one day shall you forgive a man for the same thing? See, God already knew, Jesus already knew that there are sometimes you got repeat offenders. Amen. And, and, and you've got to learn how to forgive your repeat offender. Because you will have people, see, this is, this is the, the, the dichotomy of the scripture is kind of messed up because there's, there's a duality here because I'm supposed to be forgiving folk. And so not forgiving folk means I'm in this list. But then two, two words later, I, I find out that slanderers and people without self-control would be in this group. So maybe I got to forgive the person that's just like me when I'm unforgiving that slanders me. Maybe I got to forgive the person that's just like me with no self-control. Oh, y'all don't get this. Traitors. Headstrong folk. <coughs> mm -hmm. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. But this all boils down to having a form of godliness. This illusion that we have in the church today are people, people believe that they can leave church and take the remnant of the stuff that they learned while they were in church and go to the world and live the life in the world and still hold on to the remnant and believe they saved. But you don't tell a crack addict that I want you to get delivered from crack and only smoke every now and then. Right. You don't, you don't tell the drug addict, you don't tell the alcoholic that you ain't an alcoholic if you just drink on, 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 on two days a week instead of seven. Yeah. Amen. A man has to be set free. Yes. Yes, sir. And anytime you hear a gospel that does not want to improve your life and get you away from the sin that you are loaded down with and, and appeals to the lusts in your body for sin, then you've got the wrong gospel. Thank you, God. Mm. Thank you, God. And, so, Thank you, God. and so this gospel that you are hearing might be filled with sin. Thank you, God. And so we ask the preacher, we ask that church, are you for real? <laughs> Y'all mad at me now. This I want you I want you to understand that after we deal with that we've got to deal with this. The second thing I want to talk to you after we talk about the sin sin controls the sin controlled. I want to talk to you from the standpoint either you live it or look it. See, along with the spirit of the illusion of inclusion, Brother Michael, is the spirit of deception. A lot of us have been caught into the thirst trap of believing uh, that we can just look it. So that takes you a little bit differently than what I hear now. Now it's visual. Now I want people to see. So some folk look holy. Some folks see now. See, I, I, I've gone. I've gone past the people that live any kind of way they want to. 
Now I'm going to the people who have decided that they're just going to dress up the outside. Come on, come on, come on. They just going to look good. There's a trap here that uh, I'm reminded of my pastor. For preachers, he said, Robert, sometimes it's either s- you grow in ministry, he said, it's slow, but slow is solid and steady, or it's fast and it's fragile. So I want to tell you something. When you look at live it or look it, I'm going to make an a. Uh, an admission. Mm-hmm. Living it may cost. All right. Yes, indeed. Looking it might pay now, but it'll cost you later. Yes. Thank you, God. Don't get caught up in the thirst trap. Thank you, God. Because a lot of times you've been looking at people uh, who look it. And they seem to flourish. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Thank you. Good. That's good. Paul writes now, uh, he writes, when he writes in this 10th verse, he says, But you have carefully followed my doctrine. He's writing to Timotheus, my manner of life. He said, Purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions which happened to me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all, the Lord delivered me. The truth is, wait a minute, I'm sorry, let me keep going. He said, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Yes, sir. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving, watch this, and being deceived. A lot of times what we find ourselves dealing with when we deal with this live it or look it is the spirit of deception hits the preacher. The spirit of deception hits the praise leader. The spirit of deception hits first ladies and bishops and elders and pew members and make us believe because we go to church and look like church that we all right. And so what we do is we stop working on all the other parts of our life. We stop working on getting to know God. We stop allowing our ways to please God. Uh, when a man ways please God, we stop worrying about what we say. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. He stops being your strength and he stops being your redeemer because you cannot tame your tongue and you can't find yourself saying and doing any kind of thing as long as I look right. As long as I've positioned myself to be with the right folk and and say the right stuff and wear the right stuff. So you say, I'm not a hoochie mama. I'm not a hoochie. I don't have my my, my meat out. I'm not a playboy. Uh, You don't see me with folk all around me. But late at night, you're doing what you want to do late at night. You are sneaking and, and see you've gotten good at it. You 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 and because let me let me let me help you because God ain't said nothing to you. Because God ain't stopped you. You keep doing it year after year and you've been so deceived now because now everything is flourishing around you. You got a new car. You got a new ministry. You got new followers. You got new flyers. You got a new job, but you ain't living holy. You, 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 got, you got new friends. You got new money, but you ain't living holy. And so now you try to listen. It's paying now. It's paying now. But it's going to cost you later. Because the Bible says the wages of sin are death. 
There's no way you can get around it. And so you might, you, you might, you might, you might, you might be okay. Now, so this week I, I saw someone post something that I used to say. I was a church pew baby. And there's a lot of cliches in the church that we don't really, we don't really pay attention to. And so a young man, and I'm not coming against him because his reasons for posting this is, is, is his reasons. But, and I would have posted it years ago if my understanding hadn't changed. Because I thought it was in the Bible. He posted that some people are so heavenly bound, they're no earthly good. And, and I struggled for years because that's the statement I used to make. But to say that would be anti-biblical. Because the scripture says we are to be the salt of the earth. The scripture says a light uh, that is set up on a hill. The scripture says if the salt loses its savior. Amen. So, so we are to be heavenly bound. And when we are, it says, seek ye first the kingdom. So the first thing and the primary thing that I need to be seeking is the kingdom. And then it says, and all other things shall be added. And so my first and my primary mission is to seek the kingdom. And to seek the kingdom means I got to live it. And if I got to live it, I got to be heavenly bound. Oh, my God. What I found is those that are heavenly bound, because you can see, because see, either you serve one and love one and hate or despise the other one or vice versa. So now the heavenly bound, they're, they're no earthly palatable for the folk that want to live earthly lives. But a heavenly bound person is always appealing to God. Yes. Amen. Come on. Yes, God. Jesus. Heavenly bound. Yes, God. Abraham puts his son on the altar. Yes. Heavenly bound. Yes. 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 Now the earth, his wife, the earth, his wife, if she would have known what, what her husband was going to do, might not have liked it. Right. But he had a God I love moment. And I love God more than what's here. Amen? And so I'm going to live it, and it might cost me. I'm going to live it. It might cost me friends. It might cost me likes. It might cost me jobs. But see, I'm going to live it. Is anybody here that know that you might have fell for some thirst traps before in your life? Because all you were doing was trying to look it, but you didn't want to commit. See, if you, if you meet with me la lately, you're going to hear things like commit. I want you to commit. I want you, I, want you to, I want you to sell out. I want you to be sold out. I want you to, I want you to give in. I want, you to, I want you to be for real. I want you to, oh, I just said it. Uh, 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 see, because, see, last week I told you you got to get ready. Now that you're trying to get ready, now you got to be real with it. There's some stuff I got to lay down. Heavenly bound, those things that I lost for Christ, I count as gain. Y'all with me still? Amen. Amen. Paul writes to Timotheus. He says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, the persecutions, the afflictions, which happened to me. He said, I endured. And out of them all, he said, the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire 
to live godly in Christ Jesus. Come on, put it up there. Will suffer persecution. All who desire to live godly. I want you to understand that the spirit of deception hits you when you believe that because you're going through, you're in the wrong place. When you start believing that because you're going through, uh, that this must not be God. And, and, and we misquote that God never adds sorrow to a blessing. Sometimes sorrow comes before your blessing. Oh, my God. Uh, listen, listen. Uh, the Bible says, he that findeth a wife findeth a what? Sometimes that good thing gives you sorrow. Now, see, y'all didn't you see y'all don't want me to deal with it like that. Marriage is a road that you got to walk. And sometimes marriage costs. Amen. Amen. And see, what we do is we we confuse the word and we make the word. I'm getting ready to hit y'all with something. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the problem with a lot of y'all. You make the word temporal, not eternal. Bible says those things that you see with the eyes are what? Temporal. And those things that you see in the spirit are what? Eternal. So the man who findeth a wife findeth a good thing spiritual. So that means I see my wife eternally. And so now it says, he says, now I say that my favor is locked in to my wife. Amen. Eternal. That doesn't mean that my wife might not get sick and I might not cry. Sorrow. It doesn't mean. I hate you. I hate you. Huh? Right. It doesn't even mean that my wife might not die before me. Sorrow. But it does mean. God is the joy and the strength of my life, okay? So, so tied into that spouse of mine, there are some everlasting promises and some everlasting things that the world cannot take away from me. Y'all still with me? Here's the issue here. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution but evil men and impostors will grow will grow you got to make sure that somebody's growth don't affect your growth come on amen preacher how come y'all know how come how come they getting blessed how come they church is filled? How, 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 how come they got a big fat bank account? How come they got a nice car? I know my English is messed up today, but I want to know how come. Then I'm saying, are you for real? I've been praying. I've been fasting. Are you for real? But see, you can't get caught up in that deceptive thing and make you be- and start believing that, that this is how it works. So th- the truth is, is we have to walk in completeness. Mm -hmm. That's the last one. Completeness. Completeness. That means you got to be ministry minded. That is being equipped by the word. Ministry becomes profitable when the word is applied. I got eight minutes and I'm going to get out of here. You've got to apply the word to it. Scripture says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and have and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. All scripture. Somebody said all. all. They're going to put it up there. It's given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped. Somebody say thoroughly equipped. Thoroughly equipped. For every good work. See, the deal is, and, and, and I'm closing, is you want to live your life being complete. Come on. Amen. Right. Uh, I remember as I grew up look, listening to some of the great preachers that I grew up around. 
and I grew up around some great preachers. And I'm not talking about the dynamics of how they spoke. Because, see, some of you get caught up in style. I'm talking about how they applied the word of God. Right. Amen. I remember one day marked me. I was, um, had a friend at the time whose niece died. And he called me and asked me to be there um, at the funeral and to go. And when a friend calls and asks you to go, you don't have to feel the way they feel. You feel your friend. That's right. mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand, um, because I was trying to understand God more then, I couldn't understand why I was there. When I got in the room, my friend leaned over and he told me, he said, the reason I asked you to come is I want you to be a pallbearer with me. I, I can't explain to you how it feels to be a pallbearer for a little casket. It's, it's probably one of the most heartfelt moments I've ever had because I'm carrying a child. Yeah. The preacher, one of Sandusky, Ohio's greatest men, of God, if not the greatest that I've ever met, stood up and so calmly said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Wait a minute. I was floored because all that stuff I felt Calm by not his style, but by the unadulterated word of God. Amen. So you ask me, why do I preach lately um, in these past five, six, seven, eight years just from scripture? It's because I'm reminiscent of that the word of God is more important than your style. The word of God sets free and delivers. The word of God makes you complete and the word of God is what Paul reminds Timotheus, Timothy, if you go with nothing else, go with the word. And so as we, as we look today, we are looking now for the inspiration that only God can give. And it's profitable for you. My God. This, this word that God gives, it corrects me. It instructs me on how to live. It instructs you how to live. Amen. It corrects you. Why? Not to make you feel bad, but to make you complete. Why? Because I think everyone in this room wants to be heavenly bound. Amen. The truth is that the earth is not my residence. Come on, come on, come on. This is not my permanent residence. Oh, I just wish I wish I had a believer in here. This ain't my permanent residence. Thank you, Jesus. And so maybe I'm no earthly good. Because I don't want to stay here. Every day I want to move closer to seeing my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. And I want to be real with you. I love all y'all. But if y'all ain't prepared to go, I don't want you to hold me back. Amen. And if I'm not prepared, I don't want to hold you back either. And so we've got to deal with these issues. We got to know that sin controls the sin controlled. I'm not going to preach a message that makes you believe you included that you're not. Amen. I'm not going to preach a message that appeals to your lifestyle. I'm going to preach a message that challenges you and makes you want to do better. Come on. I've got to tell the truth. I'm not worried about how it looks. or uh, You shouldn't be worried about how you look. You got to worry about how you live. Come on. Come on. And I hope all of y'all at the end of the day Amen. are complete. Amen. And you allow the spirit of God Amen. to work on you. Listen. 
I know my time is up. But I hope this message said something to you. I hope it spoke to you and make you. See, see, the truth is, if your lifestyle is not biblical, the truth is, I don't care what I preach or what I teach, I can't change the fact that you're living outside the will of God. So there's nothing, the praise team can't sing a song. Now, they might have sang a song to make you feel better, but if it don't make you live better, I'm sorry. Because, see, there's no song and then there's no message that can repair a breach. Let me say it again. There's no song or message that's going to repair the breach. No matter where you're at, if you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube, if you're sitting here, if you come back and watch it later, you got to get your life straight. Amen. We got to get our life straight. I want to know, are you real? Are you for real? Are you living the life that you're willing to pay for? When it comes time to collect your payment, are you living the life? And if you're not living the right life, and see, see, the truth is, we're in perilous times right now. Amen. Yes, we are. I don't care how you look at it. There's so much going on. Bombs are dropping. Yes. Let me say it again. Bombs are dropping. Yes, People are dying in their sleep for nothing else but a storm. People are dying on storms. There are sicknesses being released in the land that we've never seen at this, at this height before. Uh, young people are dying at an alarming rate. We're seeing, we're seeing strokes and heart attacks with young people. Are you for real? Jesus. I want you to make sure that you're ready. Your soul, you know, hangs in the balance. The Holy Spirit belongs to God. The flesh belongs to the ground. It will decay. But your soul will live forever. And you need to decide where does your soul want to spend eternity. Are you for real? Is this what you want to do? Is this what you want to be? And I want you to examine your life and decide, hey, I don't want to just look like it. I don't want to be deceived. I want to be complete. If that's you, and you say, God, help me. Help me to get ready. Help me. Help me to get ready. Help me. Help me now. And you decide you want to, you want to change your life today. Come up. You want to change your life today. Leave us a message. Contact us. Come up for prayer. Whatever you want to do. We're here. We, we want to help you. We, it still ain't working. I've been trying. We, we, we want to help you. Amen? If nobody wants to come... I want to pray and then we're going to get out of here. My time is up. And I went over by 10 minutes. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. Pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart was acceptable in your sight. Father, we pray now that you soften hearts, Father. That you open ears, Father. The mandate I feel is strong, Father. Oh, God. Give them time, Father. 
I pray that this next sin won't be the last sin, Father. And when I say that, I don't mean that they'll continually sin. I say that, that they won't die in it, Father. Give them space and time, Father. I ask that your mercy be upon him now in the name of Jesus. Bless this young man. Bless this young lady, Father. In the name, Father. Give them time, Father. Bless this old saint. Give them time, Father. Bless the black slider, Father. Bless the disgruntled preacher. Father, you know every area. Help. We give you praise for it. And we honor you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, my name is Robert Smallwood. This is Revealing Word Ministries. We're, we're live on Sundays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. On Wednesday nights, we're live at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We have prayer in-house at... Uh, at noon on Saturday mornings and then we have a special season of early morning rise prayer Thursdays at 5.30 a.m. Thursdays at 5.30 a.m. Um, if you weren't here this past Thursday, you missed it. And so, and so we, we are, God is getting ready to bust this thing wide open. Amen. And, and I hope you feel it. Listen, we asked for um, that thing touched me today. Um, um, we, uh, our evangelist asked for a special seed offering, a faith seed of $100. Um, so please, if you haven't given and you want to get in on that one, she asked for an additional faith seed. We thank you for it and we bless you for it. My name is Robert Smallwood here at Revealing Word Ministries. We know this is the place where miracles happen. We especially want to teach in love so we can reach in love. So please come on back and see us. Thank you and God bless you.